We're lighting the fires. We're raising the pitchforks. We're actually so mad, we're lighting the pitchforks over Yoshi, Tetsugo, Cole Tucker, and all these other dudes who can't hit. I have a potential compromise at hand. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. The Pirates are in Detroit tonight and then again tomorrow afternoon. Real quick, two-game 36-hour set. Actually, it'll take a lot less than that. Both games will be played within the span of one full rotation of the planet. And then they go on to Cincinnati, where they have four games in three days against the horrific Reds, one of those being a doubleheader result of a makeup earlier in the year. And these are two not very good teams. Or in the case of the Reds, have I mentioned that they are, in fact, horrific. Now, far be it from someone who documents the daily travails of your Pittsburgh baseball club to be taking shots at any other team. But the fact of the matter is the Pirates are 9-13, and while the Reds are 3-19, and with a minus 65 run differential through just one month of ball. That's some pretty remarkable horrificness, okay? It's a bad, bad, bad team. And the Tigers remain what they've been for quite a while. Again, not pretending that the Pirates aren't those things. The Pirates have been pretty much as bad as anybody over the last two years and change. But here's where I feel like this week can be of some value. It's actually on on two fronts now as I think of it. The first is, these guys could use, you know, some Ws. If you go over the first month of games that the Pirates have played. They're 0-6 against the Brewers, and five of those came by a one-run margin. And if those had flipped, even at some marginal level, your favorite team would be at least floating around 500. The Brewers are mostly responsible for this record. That's not to suggest that those losses don't count. You know, Milwaukee's in the division, and you got to play the good teams and beat the good teams at least once in a while. Kind of like over the weekend, where they had the one nice win against the Padres, who were expected, again, to be one of the better teams in the league. It required a comeback and whatever else, but they got it. So this group could use the infusion of confidence that comes with results. Winning is great. You hear me talk about that a lot on this show which feels silly because it's not exactly groundbreaking, but it's great for everybody. It's great culturally. It's great for the prospects coming up through the minor league system to see this team show up national highlights like they did Saturday night after something really significant and fun at PNC Park. You see fans jumping up and down in the background. Those prospects don't know that there was a fireworks night. They don't care. They're just seeing 2.5 2.5 seconds of something, and it looks awesome. Hey, I'd like to play there someday, too. That stuff matters. Winning is part of development. But there's there's another reason that I'm really looking forward to this week, and it's in kind of a nefarious way. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. These guys who are terrible at hitting baseballs, To this point in this season. See how nicely I worded that? Did you see that? I didn't say they stink or anything like that. Just They've not been good at hitting baseballs. They don't often hit baseballs very hard. Okay? There's a whole group of them. 
it's not just Yoshi Tetsugo and Cole Tucker. It's also Jake Marisnik. It's Josh Van Meter. They have a whole lot of sub-200 going on with this active roster. And while I understand and appreciate that the average batting average across the majors through the first month was at its lowest point since 1969. Believe it or not, that figure was 218. And that's even accounting for the universal DH. The sport has a broader problem. But in the Pirates' own world, these guys are still not doing anywhere near enough offensively because they're miles below 218. And if you'd rather speak in more modern terminology, they have no exit velocity. They don't hit the ball hard. Tsutsugo has one extra base hit all season as this team's main cleanup hitter, and that hit was not a home run. So here's my proposal. This is meeting somewhere in the middle of get these guys out of here right now and... Well, let's see what we've got with them. Let's give them some more time, indefinitely so. Here they are. One solid week of ball. All of it on the road. None of it in front of paying customers or anything that might offend anybody like that. Who does Derek Shelton think he is putting that guy out there when I brought my son to the game and et cetera, et cetera. One week. Hit against these crappy teams, or if you want to level the field here, these equally crappy teams, or you're out of here. You're out of here. They don't have to hear it. You don't tell them that in advance. You just have an awareness of it. In the meantime, you buy Mason Martin a few more at-bats in AAA and see what else he's got if he's not striking out as often, if he continues to uh, put the ball in the air with the kind of oomph that we now expect from him at every level. No reason to think that won't translate to the majors unless he whiffs like all the time. That'd be it. And it's not going to be all four guys. It's not going to be three guys. It probably won't even be two. Because Tetsugo is not going anywhere. I mean, he could. He's on a one-year, $4 million contract. But he could very easily be DFA'd. In fact, that was probably the best scenario out of any that I'd been able to think of over the weekend. You DFA him, you hope somebody else picks up the $4 million, but otherwise, you DFA him, you send him to the minors, yeah, it's ugly because he gets paid $4 million to play for the Indianapolis Indians. But at least in that scenario, he's got a plausible chance of getting right the way he did last year when the Dodgers sent him down to the minors, and he started to get his swing, and by the time he got to Pittsburgh, it was like, oh, wow, you know, here's Babe Ruth. You got nothing to lose by sending him down. Still don't think they'll do it this early, but I don't think you have anything to lose. Tucker's different. Tucker's, oh, that's that's a challenge. Because even though he wasn't their first-round pick, meaning this management team's, He is a first-round pick, and he did have that promising September last year. And at the same time, he's been pretty much this unproductive for the overwhelming bulk of the time that he has spent in the majors. There's way more of this than there was of that. One way or another, that's it. One week, and, and it's go time. Go time. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. Time for J1Q. And today's comes from Kerry Rittenhouse, who asks, you have to wonder, at what point do the Pirates just accept that Yoshi's contract is a sunk cost and cut bait by replacing him with Mason Martin? Use Michael Chavis against the tougher lefties to ease Martin into the lineup. Kerry, this sounds good. The only part of it that I'm not there with, as far as what you're putting forth, is the idea that they're hanging on to Yoshi because of a $4 million one-year investment. 
The truth is that investment is a sunk cost, to use your term, the moment it's made. Yoshi has no future with this team. Yoshi's 30 years old. By the time the Pirates are where they hope to be, Yoshi will be long gone from everyone's memories even. So they put that $4 million in hoping for exactly what he looks like. Placeholder. Maybe it's for Mason Martin. Maybe it's for someone else. But he's a placeholder. He's an obvious placeholder. Roberto Perez, who's been a pretty good player for the Pirates to date, is also already a sunk cost. One year, five million. Everyone knows he's not going to be back next year. Everyone really knows he's not going to be around. When the Altoona Brigade arrives, all those pitchers, he's a sunk cost. He's already in the past tense as far as investments go. Now, if you want to talk about something going really wrong with Kibrian Hayes and you've got nine years on the hook, okay, that's when you start using terminology like sunk cost. They want to try to get the most of him. They like him. They saw, like we all saw, what he did last September with five home runs, and a bunch of other extra base hits in the Pirates' first 13 games in which he played. Five homers in 13 games. And then just when you thought, well, he's just going to cool off or whatever, he kept hitting. He kept hitting right to the end. He looked like he had solved whatever it was that got him jettisoned out of first St. Petersburg and then Los Angeles. So that's what it's about coupled with the fact that Martin has had a history of striking out a ton in the minors. And my belief is that the Pirates want to see Martin struggle for a bit. They want to see him fall back. And then from there, they want to see how he responds to it, how he adjusts, how he listens to his hitting coaches at the AAA level. I've mentioned this before, but baseball evaluators and executives love that concept. They love to be able to check that box off. Yeah, but he struggled and he got out of it. But look, I mean, I'm not an idiot. I'm completely with you on this. Okay, I'd rather see the young guy. I'm only trying to explain here what they might be thinking. Uh, I'm all in favor of it. In fact... In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm all in favor of it being done like by the end of this week. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one tomorrow. 